Hi guys, I'm Bryony Thomas. I'm the author and founder of Watertight Marketing. A uh, pleasure to have you here. It's funny, you go live and suddenly you see your hair's really fluffy, um, but I'm sure you'll forgive me. Um, so, uh, welcome, welcome. Um, this is the next in um, my little series of, uh, of discussions or rants or um, musings on the language of marketing and whether the words that we typically use day to day as marketers and in business um, are helpful to long term sales results, sustainable and growing businesses. So what watertight marketing um, is really focused on is helping business um, SME, small and medium sized businesses to get off the roller coaster, the entrepreneurial roller coaster and into um, sustainable long term sales. And I have um, I have a theory that the way that we speak about business and the way that we speak about marketing in particular has um, a massive impact on the way that we behave. And therefore, um, the way that we uh, kind of the, what we bring to us in business, our energy and our approach and our values. And that essentially um, negative dehumanizing marketing language um, undermines the energy that exists to sustain um, that growth and sustain your sales. So um, I've written a, a list of, of 22 words. There are loads more that keep popping into my head that I, that I find either distasteful or, or, or um, really unhelpful. And uh, I did a, I did a, if you go to watertightmarketing.com forward slash language, um, then you can get uh, the last couple of videos I've done on the topic and um, also get the whole list emailed to you. So um, I've done uh, in the last video that you'll find um, at watertightmarketing.com forward slash language, I looked at the difference between shouting and listening. Um, and today I want to talk about um, competing versus collaborating. So the word is compete and competition. That's the word that I find quite unhelpful. And the word that I think would be really useful to replace it with is collaborate or collaboration. Uh, lovely. I can see people joining because I'm on this Be Live broadcast tool. I can't see who you are unless you comment. But if you comment, um, then I can see who you are and I can say hi. So if you are joining and you do want to share your thoughts or say hi, then do pop it in the comments. I'd love to love to know who's here. So today I'm talking about um, competition versus collaboration. So what is it about competing that um, that I find unhelpful? Well, there's um, there's a saying that competition brings out the best in products and the worst in people. So I'm not saying that you want to be uncompetitive. Uh, I don't want you know I don't want you to to take from this that I think competition um, is is a poor thing. I mean, if you look at natural selection and progress, and whatever competition does, all sorts of really good things to drive things forward. Um, but it shouldn't be seen as a as a default. Um, word or a default behavior. So to always be really competitive. So if you think about being competitive, then there is wanting to win um, and wanting other people to lose. A competition has one winner. It's a zero sum game. And um, that's what I think is unhelpful because really good sustainable um, marketing and sustainable sales is generated when you can get to a win win which is not competition. Win-win is collaboration. And so um, I think it is important to understand the competitive landscape, to understand the dynamics of your market, to know what um, your pe people who want to buy from you might also be considering alongside your products and services. Absolutely. And you should benchmark against that. Absolutely. Um, but in terms of your behavior, feeling competitive and being competitive um, is not very helpful. It's much more helpful to be collaborative. So um, competition brings out the, the best in products and the worst in people. So if you think competition is about benchmarking your prices, understanding the decisions that people would go through, but then think about behaving in a collaborative way, which is aiming for a win win. So one of the things I would say about um, competition is that you need to depersonalize it. Uh, so if you are tracking your competition, um, don't kind of compare yourself as an individual to themselves as an individual. So those of you who are creating personal brands or spokesperson brands, that's where tracking your competition will will beat you up um, and spit you out. So make sure that no one can compete at being you. So you know, be you. Don't try to to be somebody else. 
Um, also, I would say um, once you've done your benchmarking exercise, do it at a regular basis, but don't become obsessed by the every move that your competitor makes. Um, I was once doing a project for um, a premium jewellery brand and um, they had a, a competitor, a really big competitor, who had a massive global backup. And the organization I was working with is a small UK-based um, distributor of a particular product. And they, they wanted to copy the big brand's um, marketing strategy move by move. And these guys were advertising in consumer magazines. And if my client had move for move um, watched and copied um, the competition, by advertising in big consumer magazines, they would have spent their budget in a heartbeat. So often if you copy your competition, move for move, um, or you think you have to react to everything they do, they're spending your budget for you. Um, they are setting your strategy and you need to be setting your strategy. So don't become obsessed move by move by your competition because you need to stick, um, within reason, stick to the strategy you've set. And make sure that you understand that um, your context is perhaps different from theirs and you know responding to every move that your competition makes puts them in charge they're 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 leading you know if that were a dance they would be leading and you'd be um following step and that's clearly you know not what you want to be doing uh, doing when you're setting your own strategy and setting your own path so um, do a competitive uh, benchmarking exercise, but then don't become obsessed and don't try and copy move for move or get obsessed or respond move for move. The other thing about competitors is that it's really healthy for there to be competitors because when somebody is making a buying decision they really like there to be choice um so uh in birmingham curry mile yeah there are loads of curry houses on curry mile in birmingham and everybody goes there to have a curry um they don't necessarily go there for one particular shop they just know that there's lots of um there's lots of curry to be had and they'll go and find the best place so having a competition um often creates a market it creates a language in which people can understand what you sell so it's very very helpful um we once had a client that did voice over ip telephony and when skype came out um you know they were a bit freaked out oh my goodness you know um this is a this is going to do a land grab and in many ways actually there being skype made it really help uh, useful um in order for them to explain what it is that they did because prior to Skype they had to completely explain to people that you could make phone calls over the internet and now people understood that because Skype was in the market and you can say well you know um, talking over the internet like Skype um, but with a more reliable and your own phone number and all of the benefits they had so competition sometimes makes the conversation easier because people have a frame of reference um, and a language so competition is really useful um, and can serve a real purpose for you now, where um, where perhaps I really want to take people with this line of thought is whenever you see a competitor to think, could we collaborate? Now, one of the processes that we take people through at Watertight Marketing is understanding that marketing funnels are um, as important as filters. Just take a sip of my coffee. I hope you've got a coffee too. And that is that you need to be working with the right kind of clients, the clients that energize you, which means that some of the people that come your way may not actually be right for you. And in that situation, it's fantastic to have a collaboration with a competitor um, someone who might be perceived as a competitor might actually be someone perfect to hand off people who are not right for you, but really good for them. So I we we always walk people through a process of understanding their market and understanding someone who might take on clients who are a bit too big for them, clients who are a bit too small for them, clients that sit either side of the where they really specialize or clients that just have a different attitude or behavior. So actually understanding your competitors and creating referral relationships can be phenomenally powerful for you because it means that you can hand people off elegantly and you can monetize that. You can say no to working with someone and potentially gain a referral income from that. So actually understanding um, who to hand off to and creating collaboration with your competitors can be really, really powerful in giving you a way of elegantly handing people off and pointing people in the right direction, which really shows your credentials and making sure that the people you work with are the people that really energize you. So actually, your, comp your competitors can be collaborators in making sure that you each work with the kind of clients that, um, that you truly love working with. Um, I can see that people are joining because I'm on this Be Live um, broadcast thing. I can't actually see who you are unless you comment. So it'd be lovely 
to see who's here and do share your own um your own thoughts on what i'm talking about if you've seen if you've collaborated with a competitor i'd love to hear about that um, or if you think no don't be silly brian you need to beat the competition um and you know i th i think that you should have your own um your own flavor um and be you know the, the the only person the only organization that's you and and respect and understand that there's room in the market for for, for many more um and build relationships so that you can pass them off and potentially monetize that and it's precisely this idea of turning competitors into collaborators that has formed a phenomenal business model for us, certainly something that you could have a think about too. So, um, I, uh, at Watertight Marketing, so prior to setting up Watertight Marketing, I had my own little consulting business and I could easily have thought of every other marketing consultant as a competitor. Um, but I didn't. I built these referral relationships. And now, having published Watertight Marketing, I've created a whole business model based on equipping marketing consultants with the toolkit that I've built. So I've spent a decade creating a methodology, some pr uh, the product set, um, the values, the phenomenal uh, bank of database that we have, um, 70 odd hours of video, digital products. And now by seeing other marketing consultants as collaborators, I can license them and equip them with that um, rather than, than see them as competition. So for me, every other marketer out there is someone with whom I can collaborate. Whereas I could easily have gone into this thinking, oh, there's a competition. Um, whereas actually just by doing a little, uh, a little switch in my head and thinking, well, you know, these guys are talking to the people that I want to talk to. How could we work together? Um, how could what I do serve what they do and vice versa? So actually, by taking a look at the market, understanding your competitors and thinking, how could we collaborate? You can have a much bigger and more sustainable impact on your market. So I just wanted to challenge the um, the assumption that you've got to beat the competition and um, that being competitive and um, doing a competitor analysis and watching them move for move um, is something that is a default um, in marketing. I don't believe it is. I think having a good understanding of um, the competitive landscape is right so that you understand um, how people would go through their choices, but not feel that you have to move, um, you know, uh, step by step with those and thinking of a way of collaborating. Hi, Donna. Um, so great, uh, great question here. So uh, Donna runs a business called Therapy Solutions. Donna's one of our master planners. Um, welcome here. So you have a few competitors and they also um, train therapists so massage therapists. Donna does um, uh, ma at seat massage and in business massage in uh, organizations where you need to give people that energy zap. Um, so phone uh, um, uh, call centers are one of the, your key markets, aren't they? So um, but I link in with them as it allows me to access well-trained self-employed therapists yeah fantastic so again um you might originally think that's a competitor but actually um it may be that there are some trained therapists coming out of there who um for whom your business model works better absolutely right and the other thing about um understanding your competitors um and being really respectful about them is that when you're sitting down with a buyer so let's say um you were selling in your um in in business massage solution and you're chatting there to an HR director and the HR director is looking at wellness and sickness and um and you know staff morale and those sorts of things and um you know what the competitive mix is so you know um broadly that they're going to be looking at x y and z in order to address those issues if you understand that and you can be really respectful about the other choices that they are um that they're looking at and then walk them through the pros and cons of choice x y and z and um, that means that when they come to you they're coming to you for the reasons um that that you've both agreed are right for them. And then they're much more bought in. So actually having a really good understanding of your competitive um, market can be excellent. And actually, I would also say um, that sometimes having the dignity to say, um, you know what, I'm we're not right for you. You would be better off um, with X, Y, Z person. Um, people are blown away when you say we're not right, try these people let me introduce you at the dignity of that so if someone's not right and you pass them on to someone who's better in my experience they've become phenomenal referrers 
So somebody who's not right for you, that's been passed on to someone who is right, usually becomes an advocate and a referrer of yours. Whereas if they're not right and you take them on and do a substandard job or you're, you're not that interested, you don't really want to serve them, then they become an unhappy customer. And that's the opposite of an advocate. So sometimes turning business away and passing them on to a competitor can be the best strategy um, for your long term business health. So if you want to have a look at um, some of the other videos that I've done um, on these kind of wasteful words and watertight words, do go to watertightmarketing.com forward slash language. You can download um, the, the PDF of the, all the words and that will also alert you when I'm going to do a new li a, a live on the next word. Um, and all the videos that I'm doing, I'm going to upload to that page as well. So you can have a look through um, through the other topics that I've been through. So today I've been looking at um, replacing the word competes with collaborates. And I think it's a, a really important mindset set shift to make sure that you're not um, having um, the idea of competition weigh you down, but having a think about the way in which collaboration um, can, can raise you up and can raise everybody up. So I really, really hope um, that you can do a little bit of a, a, a mindset shift in thinking that competition is healthy, competition is good. Having a referral strategy to your competitors, um, you can monetize that, you can create phenomenal advocates um, by doing that in a dignified way. Understanding your competitive market and talking about them respectfully helps you in those buying discussions when people are truly weighing up the, um, the competition. And actually, sometimes you can switch your business model, collaborate with the people that you thought of as competitors and make something bigger and better. You know, it's a tide that rises all ships. Um, hi there, Voska. Lovely to have you here as well. Um, I will upload this video to the uh, watertightmarketing.com um, forward slash language um, page. And uh, if you download a PDF, I'll alert you when uh, when I go uh, live with the next discussion. So the next discussion that I will be having um, is going to be uh, the difference between being reactive and being predictive. So I'm going to talk about wasteful marketing reacts and watertight marketing predicts. So uh, I, I love being responsive and I love uh, jumping on a moment, but there are ways of even predicting that. Um, and I'll talk to you about that when I next do this. Lovely to see you here, guys. I'll upload this to the language page. And of course, it'll stay here on the Facebook, um, on our Facebook page. And if you have any comments or examples about how you've turned competition into collaboration and how it's really underpinned your um, long-term sales success, I'd love to hear it. Cheers. Bye.